Welcome to another edition of your Effective Living series. This is your 2023 Starter Pack on CTFM and CTTV. This week, we're looking at financial foundations for the year. We are in very difficult financial times, and our topics throughout the week have been aimed at helping you secure your financial future. This morning, I'll be speaking to a financial consultant and executive coach on how to secure your financial future in times like these. Inflation is in the, I don't know, 50s. We have CD depreciation has been a big challenge as well. Globally, inflation is high. These are tough times. Ghana is going through a debt exchange. People have lost monies through various haircuts. So how do you secure your financial future in times like this? My guest is somebody I've been talking to for a long time on these things. She used to work in an investment bank. Now she's an executive coach, and she's right in the middle of the storm. Doris Ahinati is my guest. Doris, great to have you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Happy New Year. Many happy returns. And uh, thank you for joining us. So these are wild times. You've done this for over 20 years. Have you seen any times like this before? <laughs> no, not in my lifetime yet. Wow. I mean, we had a 2007 crisis. Mm. Um, it was nothing like this. We've heard about the Great Depression mm. and other spots where we've had some challenging economic mm. seasons. This one seems to be, like, quite severe. Mm. It's very unprecedented, as you say. So the, the question is, how do you, what, what do you need to know in times like this so you don't get drowned? What, what, what does a person need to know in times like these? Okay. So thank you very much. I want us to go back to start with where we are coming from. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it becomes important for us to do something mm -hmm. in order to secure our financial future in these turbulent times is mm -hmm. the condition that these times have created. Mm -hmm. We have come from the era that we used to call the VUCA. There was a lot of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguities that mm -hmm. you have to factor into decision making. Mm -hmm. And then post COVID 2019, we've come into the era that we call the bunny. Mm. where the world and everything has become so brittle, the level of fragility has increased. There's more anxiety, and okay. emphasis here is on the anxiety bit mm -hmm. that we all have to live with. People mm -hmm. are having sleepless nights. Mm. Uh, people are mm. getting into depression, and we have suicide rates going up yeah. in some jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. So that's the anxiety bit in mm -hmm. the bunny. Mm -hmm. And then we have the fact that it's a non-linear world. And imagine how you could have two people hold the two ends of a rope versus when you just toss it and it becomes like a spaghetti and it's round, 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 and you have to figure out your way to get to the end of the rope. Nothing is linear now. Um, we used to have that level of predictability. So if I invest A today, tomorrow, this is how much I'm going to get out. The world no longer is offering you that predictability. So that's what the N for nonlinear mm -hmm. really stands for. And then we have I, which is incomprehensibility. Wow. And I'm touching on this just to prepare our minds, because if you continue to live in the world pre-COVID, mm. where we didn't have to deal with VUCA or BUNNY, and you think that you must understand things and they must make sense logically before you move. I'm sorry, we are not mm. going back to that world and you are going to be left behind. Mm. If you are looking for the linearity that we were used to, mm -hmm. it's no longer there. Mm. And once you change the mindset, then it becomes easier for you to begin to navigate your world yourself through this new world that we call the bunny mm. so that's where i wanted to start mm. from okay we you would agree with me that the backdrop that i've just painted has mm. the tendency to shake your comfort and um sort of throw you into a lot of chaos and uncertainty mm. and you want to cling on to something for hope mm -hmm. and this is where my conversation really wants to start from and I want to start with the security needs that have been created. Okay. You alluded nicely to the macro mm -hmm. indicators and how they are looking like global inflation. It's not mm -hmm. just a Ghana thing, mm -hmm. but it's across the world. Questions that is probably on people's mind would include, how far can I survive depending on my current financial resources or buffer? 
The other question is, with what certainty can I sustain my mm. earning power? Mm -hmm. You see people are being laid off. Hmm. You are asking yourself how close it is getting. Hmm. Um, what's the likelihood that in three years' time that you plan to marry, that you would have accumulated enough, um, that your wife may be working, etc. Mm -hmm. So there are these uncertainties to deal with. And mm -hmm. you are curious how to sustain your earning power. The other question that may be on a lot of people's minds is, who are in my support mm -hmm. system or network? This is mm. a very crucial mm. question. Mm. When I'm feeling all alone, when I'm feeling like I don't know where my next meal is going to come from, who are the people that I have that I might fall on? Mm -hmm. Because there may be those nights, those moments where you need to fall on someone. Mm -hmm. And then the other question is the what ifs. Mm -hmm. The what if seem unlimited. What if I fall sick? What if I'm involved in some disability? I become disabled. There's the laid off bit. Mm -hmm. There's uh, maybe you are dependent on some breadwinner mm -hmm. or someone that guarantees your income. What if something happens to them? Mm. If you are an entrepreneur, you are wondering what happens if my business should collapse? Mm -hmm. What happens with these haircuts, conversations, hmm. and debt exchange that we talk about? Mm -hmm. And then there are people that have withdrawn their cash successfully, taking a haircut of sorts mm. and hiding them under their beds. What if there's robbery? Mm. Mm. Okay, so mm. these are some of the security needs that have been created mm. uh, by the environment that we find, the turbulence, yes. So yes. how can I survive? Who is in my support network? Mm -hmm. uh, can I keep earning an income? What if sickness happens? What if haircut happens? So on the basis of all these questions, what, where do I start from? Right. Okay, how do I reset myself before we even go into a plan of action? What do I need to know around this period to respond to this? Brilliant question. And I want to say start from having a bit of knowledge and understanding of finances, mm -hmm. what we call financial literacy. Okay. The times have changed, mm -hmm. but the fact that you need to apply these basic knowledge has not changed. Mm. You have to still use the knowledge. And I like to say you have to take a double dose. Okay. I like to use the paracetamol example. If you have a migraine, I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably would have to take two paracetamol pills, whereas if it's a mild pain, you can just take one pill. Mm -hmm. So this is how you should apply mm -hmm. the financial literacy. And the aspect that I want people to focus on is the fact, uh, the principle of time value of money, mm -hmm. which says that if you can get paid today, if you can negotiate for it today, by mm -hmm. all means do that. Mm -hmm. Because that money that you would get today will be worth a lot more mm -hmm. than if it took longer for you to have access to that mm -hmm. money. So the mm -hmm. time value of money basically saying that a dollar in your hand today, a Ghana CD in your hand today is worth Hmm. more than the same nominal value promised you at a later time. So let that guide you in the choices and decisions that you make. Mm -hmm. Risk, return, positive relationship has not changed in turbulent times. Mm -hmm. If you see any opportunity that look like it's too juicy, too promising, mm -hmm. understand that it's equally coming with a much higher risk. Mm -hmm. Risk meaning that there's a probability you lose whatever you put in to start with. Okay. There is a liquidity reward. Mm. When you part company with your money, mm -hmm. that discomfort of not having your cash in your hand, you get some reward for it. Okay. And so when you pull all the money and you want to put it under your pillow or somewhere, and you are very liquid in your own macro setup, note that you are not going to earn any return for that. Let me quickly add that it's important in these times that you have liquidity, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Don't melt everything. Don't melt everything. <laughs> when we get into the action Collect point everything and come and pack it in your house and say, Charlie, me how many misika? Because Charlie, right now, I can't trust anybody. Nipa is bad. Some people have done that, <laughs> taking a haircut and they are calling me back. So now, what's, what do what, I do with the, the, do excess with the money? Liquidity. Yes, so be guided. Mm. And then also pay attention to the use of a budget. A budget is a very useful tool, and even in these times, you will still need to use your mm. budget and then build character. Mm. The key character traits that we need in these times as we get into the action planning will mm. be discipline. All right.
This is Effective Living Series. We are in the season of turbulence. My guest is Doris Ahinati, who is a financial consultant and an executive coach. And she's helping us work through how to plan your finances or essentially how to survive tough financial times. She's given us the basis. Now, she's going to give us the action plan. What do you do next? So, Doris, I'm back in your hands. What do we do? Thank you very much. The first thing you need to guard mm -hmm. and requires you to take daily action, I would recommend one action first thing when you wake up. Uh, in the course of the day, around 1, 2 p.m., mm -hmm. when the day is getting heated up, and again before you go to bed, and it is maintaining your sanity. Mm. Okay. Maintain your sanity because we are talking about the anxiety that is created by, the, by this uh, world that we are mm. in. And it's important that we guard and maintain our sanity mm -hmm. because it is with our mental capacities and resourcefulness that we create our solutions. That we are able to assess what we are even dealing mm. with and we are able to make the choice that are optimal. Mm -hmm. And so if you are mentally destabilized, if mm. you are too worried, if you are angry, you are blaming someone, you are limited in your creativity and resourcefulness to be able to come up with the right solution. In fact, you may be overshooting the runway in the kind of solutions that you are coming up with and you may end up making choices that are not, will not inure to your benefit. So maintain your mental sanity. And this bit of our emotional well-being, I know one of the preceding topics has focused on the that. Whole, the whole of the previous two weeks, two weeks before this, we've right. been doing that. So. Right. So this is positive intelligence, emotional intelligence, your social connections, mm -hmm. Practical exercises that puts you in touch with your own senses, what you are feeling in your body, mm -hmm. what is happening around you, being mm -hmm. in touch, okay? It's important that we are not so distracted and carried away. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of a activities you can research, positive intelligence exercises, and then get into doing these. And do mm -hmm. them at least three times in mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. so that you are focused and you are balanced and you are making optimal choices. Mm -hmm. The second action point that I want to share is that you must have a long-term plan and be flexible. Okay. There is a temptation in times like this that people would prioritize um, their choices based on the present. Okay. But guess what? Tomorrow will come and you'll be there, alive and well. Mm. So don't shelve your long-term plan. If it's some investment you were contributing to mm. your retirement plans, mm. don't halt them mm. just because we are in these turbulent times. Mm -hmm. Just assess the situation and continue to do contributions. If mm -hmm. the contributions may be affected a bit, so be it. Mm -hmm. But I always recommend that when you are constrained with your resources, it's also a good time for you to look for additional resource streams mm -hmm. so that you can maintain mm -hmm. whatever contributions that you had set yourself to mm -hmm. do. Pace yourself. Sometimes you may have to slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but depending on what the circumstances are, keep going with your long-term goal. Don't shelve them. So that's my second action plan. The third action plan is that you should focus on possibilities mm. in a continuous way. Sure. So the broad picture is that there's a lot of turbulence and we can't see our way too clearly. Mm -hmm. Don't stop. Take one action. When you take one action, you can only see so much. Maybe um, if I should use normal distance terms, just half a kilometer. Ask yourself that within this half a kilometer radius, what is possible? List all the possibilities and choose what you think will best work for you. But don't struggle and say that I can't see one kilometer, I can't see two kilometers ahead. And therefore, I will not take any action. I cannot do anything. I'm incapacitated and I'm overwhelmed and my world has come to an end. So every step of the way, every phase, every day, look at what is possible. What are my options? What is within my control? Mm -hmm. And then start with that. As you take action on that, you see that you, you would have access to a little bit more. You have... Um, newer doors opening and that will steadily lead you into what will give you the satisfaction and the peace that you need in these turbulent times. Mm. 
The third action point I want to, sorry, the fourth action point. So, you know, so far you haven't mentioned money. I haven't mentioned money. <laughs> And uh, we people are wondering. <laughs> we said we want to financial security, <laughs> say sanity, health, possibility, and things. Yes, anyway, we'll so come let, to yeah, that. let's move. So the fourth thing is that you should invest in people. Okay. See what contribution you can bring to the table. What okay. impact that you can make mm. and build friendships. And the reason why this is important to invest in people. You remember the meal thing. There will be days when you are cash trapped and the other person may have some warm meal to share. We are all dealing with so much and uh, we can extend a little bit of empathy and kindness to the people that we interact with because we don't know what they are also dealing with. And while it's turbulent, today you are up, tomorrow you are down. And tomorrow when you are down, somebody else is up. And so we need to hold each other's hand and support each other. That's where investing in people comes in. Mm -hmm. You should also invest in your health. This is the fifth action wow. point that I want to share. Mm. Invest in your health <laughs> and in yourself. Mm -hmm. Aim to achieve relevance. Okay? Mm. When I say invest in your health, whatever little funds you have in your hand, you are going to spend it anyway. Spend it in a way that generates dividends for you in your health. If you spend it in a way that makes you sick tomorrow, your health is your earning capacity. You have to be well to get up to go out there to earn. Mm -hmm. There are choices you will make that may lead to accidents, may lead to disabilities, which were concerns we raised at the beginning. But when you are well, then you are able to go out there and fend for yourself. And then the bits on investing in yourself in times like this, it may become important for you to self-disrupt. There may be newer mm. skills. Mm. And I know there's a bit that focus on career and skills as well. That may be more relevant today. And you shouldn't say that, oh, as for me, I pursued a degree in archaeology or I pursued a degree in accounting or something, and that's my focus. That's all I have to do. In turbulent times when there's a lot of disruption, you have to find what programs, what courses are relevant and align yourself so that you continue to have that income earning power, whatever the situation may be. I want to quote Dr. Jim Kim here. Mm -hmm. He says that I don't want to be something. I want to do something. So let's not seek that we've accumulated some high balance and we are um, some, what do they call them? Uh, celebrity, mm -hmm. and that's all there is. But look at what impact that you are bringing into the community that you are in. Mm -hmm. The sixth is that stay curious and interested okay. and contribute. Your curiosity will help you to see what is going on <clears throat> in your environment, what opportunities that will earn money for you are there mm -hmm. so that you can latch onto them yeah. and then call out for help. Wow. This is incredible. We are still on the Effective Living series. This is the second day of our fourth and final week and we're focusing on securing your financial future we call it financial foundations for 2023 and this morning doris ahiati is helping us appreciate how to uh, secure your financial or status in turbulent times she's given us a, a, an action plan uh, maintain your sanity have a long-term plan uh, focus on possibilities in a continuous way invest in people invest in your health, stay curious and interested, uh, and contribute and then call out for help. Now, I guess people will be asking, okay, yes, we've heard all of that, but give me some practical tips on what to do now. Okay, now I have liquidated all my funds, or I don't have any money, or I'm in debt, or whatever. I just want you to tell me one or two things, in addition to whatever you said, that I should not forget before we go. So, Doris. Right. I'm mindful that we all come from different backgrounds and as a finance professional mm -hmm. the caveat is always to make recommendations based on people's unique circumstances mm -hmm. and so we do profiling mm -hmm. i'm not able to do profiling for all our listeners from where mm -hmm. we are sitting mm -hmm. so i'm giving principles that people can apply mm -hmm. in the measures that are most effective based mm -hmm. on their own circumstances mm -hmm. and i have a list of maybe 10. okay the first one is consideration and empathy all right it ties in a bit with something I've said earlier. So be considerate. Mm -hmm. There are people that would have opportunities to earn money 
and they may be so inconsiderate with their ask mm -hmm. that they end up losing out. Okay. Opportunities are there as we speak. Mm -hmm. Businesses are struggling. Mm. Everybody is impacted. Now, the one who is considerate of the circumstances of the customer is the one who gets the opportunity to provide the service mm. and therefore get paid. Mm. So don't set your ask so rigidly high that you end up missing out. There's a job opportunity. You went there, your minimum acceptable salary is so high that even though you are the most qualified and they would have employed you, they turn you away because you are not able to manage your ask. Mm -hmm. This is how it impacts mm. you financially. Okay. Then the second point is to listening to all the people are impacted. This relates to the first point. Mm -hmm. The person who is employing you, your customer who says that, give me a week to pay you. The person that says that, yes, I can patronize your services, but can you reason with me in this way? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm dealing with in my own setup. So can you meet me halfway? Mm. We need to learn how to listen to these people and truly hear them and trust what they are sharing with us so that we can continue to be in business. Remember, we are holding each other's hand mm -hmm. in these times. Mm -hmm. Then also measure the scope of impact of whatever austerity actions that you decide to take. Very important. Yes. Mm. Um, there are some people that are making changes in their home setup, yeah. in their business setup. But that particular item that you are touching, Charlie. how much difference will it make? You are cutting everything. Yes. Charlie. So let's target those items that we mm. decide to work on. I was okay. working out an example. Mm -hmm. So we are in austerity and we decide that we are no longer dining out or we are minimizing mm -hmm. and then i was thinking that imagine a situation where from time to time you have help with food cooked by someone and it costs a little bit less than if you cook it yourself and that affords you the opportunity if you are qualified to teach your own children that will save you how much you pay um what do you call home teacher mm. the home teacher as a professional may be charging you more if somebody helped with the cooking and you save that time, if you are qualified, the savings from there may not be that much. But if you look at the saving by not re-engaging that teacher's services, you mm. save a whole lot more. So wow. we also need to weigh the cost benefits implications of whatever choices that we are making. It's not just a sweeping um, let's not eat out. It may be good for one family. It may not be ideal for another family. So depending on whether this person is able to cook easier or teach easier, yes. they may decide to solve for bringing a home teacher yes. or bringing somebody to help to clean the house and cook. Yes. So it, it's very idiosyncratic, but you must, you don't just cut and say no teacher, no home, anything. You have to be... Precisely. Mm, I get that. So look at your that. circumstances. Mm. You may have the higher earning power for your time yeah and so you may still continue when people are saying let's do everything by ourselves mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. it may make sense to still outsource mm -hmm. and then go spend your time to earn mm -hmm. prioritize your health i've mentioned that then cut cure wastage mm -hmm. i think that's a very good place to start with austerity there are things we buy that we don't use mm. when you go into people's dustbins this is the time that i want to see bins dry mm. dry because the biodegradables have been put in a place where you are planting two or three kukuyam or pepe that you can harvest for use in your house and the biodegradable is fertilizing the soil for you the plastics there are companies in ghana that recycle plastic and they will be happy to trade whatever plastics you bring to them in exchange for something, maybe a bottle of water or contribution to your electricity units that you buy. They are there in this country. So let's be mindful and make use of uh, what was waste. Mm. Portion control as well comes in here. We used to overeat. Portion control. Yes, obesity has been on the ascendancy. The cameraman is laughing. So this is a good time for you to take good care of yourself. You don't control more. <laughs> Pushing, control your pushing, my brother. <laughs> Go with the flow. Uh, oh, yes. Life mm. in turbulent times becomes like surfing on mm. the oceans. Mm. If you go with the tides, mm. it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. But when you resist it, Charlie. then it's very stressful because mm. you are fighting an uphill. Charlie. It's an uphill task. You are not mm. going to win anyway. Mm. So go with the flow at any point in time. Just pause. Assess your circumstances and see what is the best 
option to follow what is the best step what is the best route to pursue now mm. and then bit by bit we will sail through this i want to assure our listeners that these financial seasons and cycles from time immemorial as they, they they put it they've been they've been there we have those times when there's a lot of difficulty and then we come out of it we begin to recover and we have another boom again and we go back to the beginning of the cycle so please don't feel while we are in the present moment that this is all the world is going to be for the rest of our lives um, i'm a christian and mm. i know that there is predictions of tough times but i also believe that for mm. christians and whatever you believe in you are able to look up to your god mm. to provide for you in these times also and be hopeful that we will eventually come out of this mm. this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come that's what she's saying but uh, for those who know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits, exploits. so what i like our presentation is that you've been you've not been heavy on just money it's like a total thing. You're talking about health, mm -hmm. priority, empathy, behavior. And a lot of people don't come to finance like that. And I, I think it's a very important distinction, you know, because a lot of people feel, give me a budget, let me write this, that, 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 that. But essentially you're saying, you're, if you are not healthy, you can't make money. If you are not in the right frame of mind, you can't make money. If you are not thinking straight, you can't make the right decision. So we, we should not make it mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you've... You sort of demystify finance in a way that I like a lot because I was even looking for a presentation with calculators and things. <laughs> you know, I thought they come to calculate how much you and cut this, but you've not done any of that. And I feel what you're saying is that if you think straight, you are careful enough, you accept that these are difficult times, not going to last, you can do a lot of practical, sensible things that will keep you afloat and obviously talk to people. So final point, if somebody wants to talk to you, they like your presentation, want to reach you, how can they get in touch with you? So, um... <clears throat> I like to put my email address out there, mm -hmm. dorisahiati at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And we, I'm happy to connect on LinkedIn. I'm mm -hmm. Doris Ahiati everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that and then www.crescendoconsultlimited mm -hmm. is another place where mm. um, they might be able to yeah. reach For me. For those of you who don't know, Doris is a certified John, Maxwell, John C. Maxwell coach. She's an international coaching federation member. She's a chartered institute of bankers Ghana member, also of the Security and Investment Community UK. She's also a DISC accredited consultant coach. And just say, the coaching level there, like jogging club, <laughs> Coach Masters Academy alumnus. Charlie, do all. Please listen to this interview again, share it with friends, get in touch with Crescendo Consult, and I'm sure, even though times are tough, we'll get through together. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening. This is the Effective Living series. We call it Startup Pack 2023. We'll be with you next time. Bye-bye.